Um, thanks a lot, Karen uh, Gearlock and uh, Labour for bringing forward uh, the bill. Um, we support the bill, support anything that will um, enable people to take the action that people want to take, and the evidence strongly suggests that people are in favour of doing everything that they can um, to, um, to try and contribute to the collective effort to avoid the climate catastrophe that we're currently hurtling towards. Um, and that attitude of ordinary people obviously contrasts very sharply with the attitude of the global leaders seen, unfortunately, over the last two weeks at uh, COP26. Uh, um, but the failure of, of COP26, I think, also highlights that um, I, I, I do think that the thrust of the approach, like we agree with the bill, no problem, but the thrust of the approach of focusing on the question of carbon footprints and people's individual choices is um, pointing in the wrong direction um, as the main direction of what needs to be done. And I think that's highlighted by the fact that the bill is using the phrase carbon footprint, but who, who invented the phrase carbon footprint? It was big oil. It was the uh, brainchild of an advertising agency employed by British Petroleum precisely to point away from the main responsibility of global corporations, global capitalism, for um, the climate catastrophe that we're experiencing. To quote Mark Kaufman, British Petroleum, the second largest non-state-owned oil company in the world, with 18,700 gas and service stations worldwide, hired the public relation officials, Ogilvy and Mather, to promote the slant that climate change is not the fault of an oil giant, but that of individuals. It's here that British, British Petroleum, or BP, first promoted and soon successfully popularized the term carbon footprint in their early aughts. The company unveiled its carbon footprint calculator in 2004, so one could assess how their normal daily life, going to work, buying food, and gas traveling, is largely responsible for heating the globe. And of course, that covers up the very important truth that by the time an individual goes to the shop, by the time an individual travels to work or whatever, just so many choices have already been made. And they aren't, in, they aren't able to take the most important choices in terms of the nature of food uh, production, the nature of energy production, etc. Those are political choices and economic choices that are made by the, um, the capitalist class and their political uh, representatives. And there's a danger of kind of, of assisting them in avoiding the truth that the climate catastrophe is being driven by a handful of major corporations. Um, they have names and addresses, they have headquarters, they are who we should be targeting. Um, and ordinary people have and will over and over again show that they want to take whatever actions that they take. But this is fundamentally a systematic problem and requires systematic <laughs> solutions. Focusing on personal responsibility will not solve the climate crisis. There is a parallel here, of course, uh, with COVID, where, of course, personal responsibility is very important and so on, but it, it, it isn't enough, such as the scale and the nature of the problem that we uh, face. And so rather than just labelling products, and we absolutely should label products with their carbon footprint, what we need to do is actually tackle the polluting major corporations directly. Um, so, you know, very simply, in this country, we need to ban any further data centers, not just to put a sign outside saying how bad that they are. Um, we need to force fossil fuel companies to keep the oil and gas in the ground, even though that will come at a cost to them of five trillion dollars in terms of assets that are currently on their books that simply can't be realized, as well as the various investment in fossil fuel infrastructure that will have to be stranded. We, we need to transform our transport system um, to mean that people have the real option of availing of free, green and frequent public transport, of safe cycle lanes, of walking, in order to avoid and um, use the reliance on private cars, um, either of the petrol or diesel variety, but also of the electric uh, variety, which is also not uh, the answer. Fundamentally, as the slogan goes and has been widely taken up, we need system change to stop uh, climate change. And I would argue that the, the system that needs to be changed is the system of capitalism, of production for profit, of the exploitation and the treatment of nature as something taken for free, as well as the exploitation of labour. And the kind of change that we need is uh, socialist change. Um, individual actions that we can all do are welcome, but the crisis is beyond individual action. 
It requires transforming not just our public transport system, but our energy system, our housing system, and fundamentally our economic uh, system. And so that way of organizing society of uh, private ownership of the core sections of the economy and production, private for profit, must go. We need an alternative eco-socialist system that puts people and planet before profit. We need to have the big polluters, the currently big polluters, in democratic public ownership. And then we need to plan uh, for a society which prioritizes the quality of people's life, which centers the idea of a, a good life uh, for people, as opposed to the, the drive of consumption um, that capitalism uh, pushes onto people.